Good evening and salutations, my Jade fans. Let's start off with Dante and Sam. Because here's the thing about this scene. Sam, what are you doing? Why are you even in here for? The reason why I say that is because Sam comes to the police station and she's like, she wants to help Dante try to find Jason to bring him in safe and, you know, the father of her children and stuff like that. And, you know, Dante even points out the fact that, like, weren't you, weren't you and Jason done yet? Like, y'all, y'all done? Like, what are you, what are you doing in here for? Um, and of course, Sam tries to say some BS and I'm just like, no, no, this, this literally makes no sense. You know, because Dante points out the fact that, yes, Jason got shot, but Britt is with him. And even when Spinelli, because Spinelli does want him coming in there, because she somehow convinces Dante that it's a good idea for her to, like, you know, come along with um, Dante to try to find Jason. So at some point, they wind up calling Sam. I mean, they wind up calling Spinelli to come down there. And when Spinelli gets down there, well, first Dante plays bad cop. And then Sam comes in there and tries to play a good cop. And she's all like, well, you know, you got to sit there and help me find Jason. You know, after we've been through and everything like that. Yada, yada, yada. I'm just sitting there thinking, um, yeah, you're still not really making a lot of sense. Of course, this is some sort of diversion to, um, try to play Dante and try to find, um, Jason herself. But I'm sitting there thinking, Why? At one point, she tells, you know, she says to um, Spinelli, you know, Britt is with her and, you know, you can't really trust her with, with Jason and stuff like that. And I'm like, why not? He's been shot. I mean, seriously, it, he's been shot. And who do you think he's going to actually need? You are Britt. So what are you talking about? Like, it, this whole scene with her that they're trying to find Jason and everything like that is just like are they just trying to give Sam stuff to do because I didn't notice it into this episode and I think back on some of the other episodes I'm just like what is Sam's point on being on the show anymore I mean she's not she's not working at Aurora she's not working as a PI she's not along with Jason anymore so like what is her place I mean, we all know that eventually they're going to sit there and want to put in her with Dante. And that's going to be hella weird. But, like, besides that, I, I just... I I'm starting to see less of a purpose of Sam being on the show. Um, but she does want to get the information out of Spinelli. And, of course, Dante is like, yeah, okay. I got somebody sniffed there following her. Sam gets to one of the safe houses. Dante is right there, right behind her. Dante kicks in the door. Jason and Britt are already gone. Now, the only thing that I, I felt that was kind of interesting about this whole Britt, Britt, um, Britt Spinelli and Jason scene was at some point when Britt went to go take a phone call and, you know, Jason was like, listen, I got to sit there and get to Carly. You got to sit there and help me. Spinelli called Britt the bridge and Jason defended her and of course you know Britt is like not that far away and sees it and starts smiling because you know we all know where this is going to go so um but yeah they left a long time ago by the time Dante and Sam got there they're already gone I don't know where they're going but they're in a car driving somewhere and um this is going to be kind of fun. I, um, I got to sit there and say out of all the scenes so far in this show, their scenes were probably the best. Um, just how well they play off of each other. Let's talk about this Trina and Jordan scene because the one thing that I noticed about Jordan is that she didn't learn a damn thing about why her marriage failed. Trina wasn't it there, you know, feeling guilty and stuff like that. She was like, you know, yeah, you guys got to sit there and work it out. And of course, you know, Jordan's like, listen, we had cracks in our marriage way before this whole Tiger thing started. And it was all about trust. <sighs> she started off good. But then she was like, well, you know, sometimes when you're a cop and stuff like that, you have to sit there and lie. And, 
you know, you can't always sit there and tell your partner, you know, your boyfriend or whatever the truth. I'm like, no, Jordan, you can't use the fact that you were a cop and you lied to Curtis one too many times. And that's the reason why your marriage failed. Your marriage failed not because of cop business. Your marriage failed because you just lied to him in general. Not about cop stuff, just lying in general. Like, even the fact that when your health was failing, you didn't sit there and tell him. When TJ got kidnapped, you didn't sit there and tell him. Like, the fact that she tried to use the whole, you know, cop thing as an excuse of, you know, when, you know, it's just how it is, you know, when you're a cop and you just gotta lie and you, you, know, you can't always sit there and tell the truth. It was like, you didn't learn a goddamn thing, did you? Nope. Just checking. So, with that being said, um... Trina, after talking to Cam real quick, winds up going to Curtis' place, I guess, to try to talk to Curtis and try to get them back together, whatever. Now, the interesting thing about the Curtis and Portia scene was in the beginning, when Portia stopped by and she was like, you know, I want to see if I can help, this woman walked in and Portia had that look like, oh, well, I see you got all the help you need. I'm good. And Curtis was like, no, this is She's my mixologist. She's going to be helping with the drink menu. Um, so they start drinking and drinking and drinking and stuff like that. Trying out all these different drinks and stuff. And I'm not going to lie. Watching all these different drinks was just like, uh Remember those days where I was sitting there going out with my friends. Just, you know, drinking and stuff like that. Just having a good time. I miss that. <laughs> so, you know, while that whole little montage thing was going on and stuff like that. Now... The two things that was interesting to me was one, they talked about a drink. Um, it brought back some memories or whatever. And towards the end of it, Portia was like, so do you want to put that on the menu? You know, as far as like having drinks for people and stuff like that. And, you know, Curtis was like, no, nah, let's just kind of just, you know, leave it as a memory. And I could have swore, and I could be wrong. I could have swore. Portia had that look on her face like she was kind of disappointed. Um, then the only other thing that really went up happening was when Portia was sitting there trying to take off Curtis Ring. Because once again, Portia brought up the fact that, you know, the bartender, well, the mixologist, was like flirting with him and smiling and everything like that. And, you know, Curtis was like, you know, I'm just not really ready and stuff like that. Like, I'm just, you know, whatever. I'm just doing me just about the nightclub and stuff. And Portia noticed that he still had his wedding ring on. And after looking at it for a while, she was like, yeah, let me take this off. But it got stuck. So Portia was helping him with the ring. And at this time, Trina was looking at this whole thing play out. And she didn't have a look of like, like anger, but it was more just like, like, like infusion. So I'm just wondering tomorrow, how this whole thing's gonna play out. Like, I don't know if she's gonna be like just asking questions. Is she just gonna be bratty? Like, I don't know. Like, with Trina, sometimes you just, you, you just don't know. Um, so I guess we'll find out tomorrow. After Carly finished grilling Jocelyn and Jax about the bullet wound and the boot and everything like that, um, Jocelyn goes in another room. And, well, Jax and Carly get into it. Again. About the business, about the mob violence, and everything like that. And watching this scene, I was just like... Man, I could have swore I saw this before. Now, this has been a constant argument between Jax and Carly as far as Jocelyn and the mob and stuff like that. Here's the thing. Jax is upset that Carly kind of took over, you know, like the head of the mob or whatever as far as the family is concerned. And Carly's like, listen, this had to play out this way. Jason has been shot. He's on the run. Sonny is quote unquote dead. No one else could sit there and run the organization. I had to sit there and step up. And Jax is like, no, you didn't have to. Somebody else could have did it. Who? Jax who? With Dante, the cop? Michael, the, with the... The ELQ CEO? Like, who? Who's going to sit there and step up? 
honestly tell you the truth, I'm not going to lie. I, I was like, I'm siding with Carly on this one. At the end of the day, Jax, you knew exactly what you were signing up for. So unless you are planning on taking Jocelyn around the world, this was going to play out eventually. And you knew this, you know? Like him getting mad and getting upset, I get it because he's a parent, but it was like, you're acting like this is a surprise. Like, this is a surprise. Like, Sonny eventually was going to wind up being dead. Or Jason. Or both. And this is going to wind up happening eventually. So, I don't really understand why Jax is so surprised about this. I really don't. And I think the last scene. I'm not too sure. But I think the last scene. Um, yeah, the last scene is going to be the Cam, Scotty... And um, Liz portion of this episode. So they come back from the police station. And Cam is like, so so Peter did it? And at first, he's surprised. He still thinks it's Jason. He's like, he can't believe that it's Peter. And after Liz and Scott convinced him that, yeah, it was Peter that did it. You know, Cam goes upstairs because he feels guilty. He feels guilty about what he said to Jason. He feels guilty about what he said to Jake. He feels guilty about how he acted, you know, how he treated Jocelyn. And how even towards the end of the episode, he winds up going over Jocelyn's place, which is... Well, I mean, he winds up going over Jack's place, which is kind of odd, because I could have swore he would actually wind up going to Carly's place first, but I guess he might have went there first. Whatever. Anyway, he winds up going to um, Jack's place to probably apologize to um, Jocelyn. Um, now at this point, I'm sitting there thinking, you think it's a good idea for you not to really kind of talk to him a little bit more before he confronts Peter and, I don't know, one up missing or, you know, because he's a hothead on a good day, which by the way, um, both Scott and Liz agreed that yeah it might be a good idea to get him some counseling because yeah he might have actually shot him like jason but uh besides that really liz just seems kind of confused you know as far as how to handle this whole situation you know like how you know how's he gonna sit there and handle um Cam and Jake and everything like that. It's just, it's just a mess. That's another thing that I'm sniffing and thinking about. So when Spinelli, because when Dante calls Spinelli down to the police station, and you know, Britt was kind of worried that he was going to say too much, give away their location, and everything like that. You know, Jason was like, you know, listen, I trust, you know, I trust him like pretty much my life. You know, I know Spinelli, and I know exactly how it's going to play out. But you just say you trust him. So, like, what? Did y'all have a plan or something? I, I, I'm, I feel like there might have been a step that was missing. You basically, from what I gathered, before this whole thing went down, was that you basically was like, he's not going to say anything. He's just going to keep his mouth shut. But he didn't keep his mouth shut when he talked to Sam and alerted Dante. And y'all left. I'm also sitting there thinking... How many times did you not sit there and see Jason sit there and say, lawyer, Diane, lawyer. But when he got down there, you know, Dante started grilling him and everything like that. And he was just like, oh, I can't say anything. I'm like, lawyer. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be making merch about that. T-shirts that says, lawyer. I, I just, I don't understand. That scene, especially since Spinelli actually worked with Diane when he was writing his book or whatever. I I would have felt like that would have been the first thing to say, but okay, sure, I guess I guess that just needed to play out because um soap opera and logic, so whatever. I feel like that's about it, more or less. I don't think anything else really majorly happened except for Trina talked to Cam and not gonna lie, didn't really go anywhere except for the fact that Cam was inspired to probably go to Jocelyn's place. Uh, to try to find Jocelyn to sit there and talk to her. Other than that, didn't really go anywhere. 
And I can't think of anything else that majorly happened that was like majorly important. So I think that's actually about it. Um, so yes, with that being said, that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on the comment section below. Um, be safe. I will catch you in the next review.